Hey folks, I'm excited to share with you my spoil board design for my CNC, which incorporates T-Track, three quarter inch dog holes, and threaded inserts. The combination of these three systems working together provides a lot of different clamping options depending on the operation of your CNC. This is a third evolution on prior designs that only use T-Track because I found that whether you're doing surfacing, engraving, or cutting all the way through material, you're looking for different options. So stick around and see how I built it. Let me review the design so that if you're looking to replicate this on your machine, you've got the information to do so. I've divided my area into eight different six inch strips to comprise the 48 by 48 area. The threaded inserts are gonna be spaced three inches apart, both along the X axis and the Y axis. The dog holes are gonna be spaced six inches apart on the X axis and three inches apart on the Y axis. These holes together form a lattice that is replicable across both axes so that you can create accessories and a sacrificial board that will fit on top of this exact pattern. Let's first get started by cutting our eight MDF panels. To reinforce the T-Track, I'll be cutting a rabbet on the underside of each one of the panels to resist some of the vertical forces. So as you crank down on your T-Track accessories, the spoil board itself is supporting those vertical forces. I decided to use my router table to cut these rabbits, but you could just as easily use your table saw. With all the panels cut, I use some double-sided tape to temporarily secure the panels in place as I make the next carves. To help me find the corners, I use a 12 degree bit and mark out the exact corner location of the cuttable area of my CNC. For the first carve, I'll be cutting the holes that will allow the screws to secure the spoil board in place permanently. I've got some dimensions splashed on the screen if you're interested in replicating these exact dimensions. And I'll have all the screws and hardware linked in the description below if you're looking to replicate this. One important thing I wanna point out here is that I'm gonna carve this in a single carve so that all of my holes are exactly aligned along the X and the Y axis. I was concerned that if I cut each panel individually and then tried to align them as I was attaching it to the table, that if I was off by even a millimeter, some of the accessories and the sacrificial board, which we're gonna cover later in the video, wouldn't fit perfectly. So that's why I'm using the double-sided tape here to temporarily secure them in place and then cut everything at the same time so that everything is indexed appropriately. The last thing I did was cut the three quarter inch dog holes. Now the Goldilocks dimension I found was 0.77 inches and that allowed the dog accessories to go in and out of the holes relatively easily without being too loose to where they moved around within their slot. This next part is by far the most tedious of the process and that's to flip every single panel over and countersink the holes for the threaded inserts and then install all 256 threaded inserts. With the threaded inserts installed, we can now attach the panels to the table. To help me align each of the panels, I'm using the dogs in the pre-drilled dog holes to align each of the panels just perfectly. If you look closely, I actually carved a little bit into the table itself so that the dogs could sit flush and for this process right here to align the panels before screwing them down permanently. With the panels installed, it's now time to flatten the spoil board system. And I used a giant three inch surfacing bit for this. 
and it was so big that the bit actually stuck below the bristles of the dust boot and as a result dust just went everywhere so while it did go faster i felt like i spent more time cleaning up the mess on the back end so given that we've invested a lot of time into making the spoil board system perfect i decided to protect it by developing these 24 inch by 24 inch sacrificial panels that are going to sit on top of the existing spoil board this will make sure that if you ever carve all the way through the material and you accidentally carve a little bit too deep the spoil board system underneath remains protected and just the sacrificial piece on top is what gets carved into so here's one that i carved off camera and you'll notice that it's got the exact same hole patterns as what we carved into the spoil board so if you wanted to use this to carve all the way through some material you can drop in a couple of dogs like you see me doing here and then pair them with some accessories to secure your piece in place. Here you see me using some extendable clamps to hold a piece in place or alternatively you can use some bolts with the threaded inserts from the spoil board to either secure the sacrificial board or use a variety of accessories which we'll get to in a moment. And in the event that you cut all the way through the sacrificial board it's as simple as doing a small surfacing pass with your surfacing bit and then you're good to go all over again, all the while never having to touch the original spoil board. Now with everything built, let me spend a few minutes talking about the variety of clamping options available with the spoil board system. The first is T-Track accessories, and most of these come in the form of clamps. And these work in principle by having a bolt with a T-nut down the bottom that slides within a T-Track that's sandwiched in between two spoil board panels. You can then rotate a knob on top of the clamp that then applies vertical pressure down in your workpiece. These are great for quickly securing a piece in place, but if your tool pads are going anywhere near where you're clamping the piece or you're doing a surfacing operations, they're not ideal. Next, let's talk about the three quarter inch dog hole accessories that can be used with this spoil board system. I took inspiration from a workbench that I built earlier this year because I've come to appreciate the variety of clamping options that dog holes can provide. They're particularly good at providing lateral bracing anytime that you're trying to secure a piece in place. You can simply drop a few dogs in the dog holes and then use one of these adjustable clamps to apply lateral pressure, which is great if you're doing something like a surfacing operation where you need the top of the piece to be completely flat. The dogs are also long enough that they can go all the way through the sacrificial board and register within the spoil board system so you can quickly be up and carving in seconds. The last and by far the most versatile of the clamping options are these threaded inserts because they can be paired with a near infinite number of accessories. One of my favorites are these 3D printed toe clamps. Now, I don't have a 3D printer myself, but I found these on Etsy for less than $2 a piece. And they're great because they provide vertical pressure in addition to lateral bracing. So a couple of these placed around the edges of a piece can be really helpful. You can also design and create your own accessories like you see me doing here. And then you're only bound by the limitations of your own creativity. For this particular design, I'm doing a few L brackets, some cam clamps, and a variety of bracing options, all of which are designed to work with a lattice of threaded inserts that we have installed in our spoil board. One of the most useful of these accessories is this L bracket that's got an inset for your touch probe. I like this because it provides a point on the spoil board to register consistently. So if you're going to be batching out the same type of a project over and over again, it gives you a place where you can register the corner of your stock in the same place each and every time. You can also install this on top of the sacrificial board if you want to. I also made myself a few cam clamps and these work by having an eccentric hole such that as you turn the lever of the cam clamp, that lobe pushes the piece up against a fixed point. To release the pressure, you just rotate the cam in the other direction and you can easily remove the piece. This bracing piece has a T-channel cut down the middle of it and it's got a rounded end and a flat end. This gives you a lot of flexibility if you're trying to clamp something that is irregularly shaped. And you can also supplement these with other clamping options that we've already talked about. Here you see me using the retractable dog hole clamp to help secure this round Lazy Susan in place. And when I'm not using these accessories, I created some customized inserts to hold all these things. I've got my T-Track clamps, my dog accessories, my actual dog here on the floor, uh, as well as a variety of bolts and collets for the spindle. And in my left-hand drawer, I've got all of my quarter-inch bits, my half-inch bits, my toe clamps, cam clamps, uh, calipers, and wrenches. 
Now, I didn't make a video about this, but I do have footage for it. So if you want to see how I built it, let me know in the comment section so that I can actually take the time to show you how I built it. All right, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you on the next one.